Good day, my name is Sebastian Bingheimann, and I'm a research associate and project manager at the Institute of Transnational Research uh, at CCAT from the University of Cologne. The topic of this presentation is ident identifying relevant clinical questions. These are some general information um, regarding the uh, structure of this presentation. First, I would like to start with the status quo of the available evidence of a medical issue. This includes the identification of relevant literature by databases, the identification of registered trials, and the question whether guidelines exist or not. In the next step, I would like to highlight the assessment of the available evidence which includes um, that you are hopefully able to build your own critical point of view, the assessment of the in individual studies, and uh, a detection of unanswered research questions. And in, in the next step, uh, it might be necessary to formulate appropriate study questions and or study hypotheses. The identification of relevant literature is one of the major steps to quantify the evidence. Therefore, several, several literature databases are available. Uh, most importantly, um, PubMed and the Cochrane Library, as well as Google Scholar in some cases. What is important when you screen the uh, databases uh, for relevant literature? you should be aware of the date of publication. Is the study that you have identified up to date? Are the conflicts of interest uh, stated by the authors highlighted? Is the study funded by industry or public? Uh, which study type is presented in this uh, manuscript? Is it a clinical trial, a meta-analysis or a cohort analysis? And the question regarding whether the um, a study was uh, peer-reviewed and the impact factor of the journal. These are some short descriptions of um, the PubMed um, database, the Cochrane Library and Google Scholar. Um, PubMed is an open access online repository and meta database supporting the search and retrieval of life science and biomedical literature. Most articles have a link to the full text version. Operating the search engine is straightforward by typing the author name, publication title, or keywords into the search bar. Usually a set satisfactory number of hits is yielded. And the further uh, descriptions of the other two databases are given here. This is a short uh, topic, uh, topic excursus with respect to the evidence um, levels that are currently used. This table is um, adapted by the Oxford Center for Evidence-Based Medicine. And in the left um, column, uh, you can see the grade of recommendation. In the second column, you can see the level of evidence. And on the, in the third column, you can see the study type. And um, the highest degree is the 1A level which includes a system, systematic review um, of uh, randomized controlled trials, and the lowest degree as a D5 level, for example, represented by expert opinion without explicit critical appraisal. And between these two levels, the highest and the lowest degree, there are several other um, um, evidence levels, for example, the 1B level represented by individual randomized controlled trials, um, or a 2A level uh, represented by a systematic review of cohort studies, or uh, the 3B level uh, represented by indi individual case control studies. The identification of uh, registered trials is also a very, uh, very relevant aspect for identifying um, available evidence. The most re relevant databases are the European, European Union Clinical Trials Register, the so-called OIDRA-CT, and 
clinicaltrials.gov uh, funded by the United States. Um, I would also highlight the ISRCTN registry and the International Clinical Trials Platform. Coming to the questions uh, regarding the importance. Um, important questions are, for example, which trial is represented here um, or which um, type of trial is represented here? Is it a phase two or phase three trial or was or is the study randomized or not randomized? The, uh, the status of the trial is also re relevant. Um, is it started or not? Is um, the trial ongoing or recruiting? Or is the, start, uh, the trial completed or not? Uh, trial results available is also very important. Um, if you can see preliminary or final results, um, that is um, yeah, very important for your search. And um, the last question is uh, whether um, the trial was uh, funded by public or industry. These are two short descriptions of the previously highlighted databases, the OIDRCT and clinicaltrials.gov. Another important question is whether guideline, guidelines exist or not. First, you should screen for local guidelines, for example, in your hospi hospital. Additionally, you should also screen for national and international guidelines. And again, some very important questions are the date of publication, um, are updated guidelines in progress, is a comp comprehensive presentations of the previously um, um, highlighted evidence level um, um, given um, within, within these guidelines, are the conflicts of interest highlighted, and are uh, relevant medical specialties represented in the author lists um, of this guideline. For the assessment of the available literature, it is very important to build your own critical point of view. And you can also discuss this with your colleagues. This includes the following questions. Was a relevant patient population selected? Was a literature search carried out? Was the right study design used? Was a potential bias detected? Or were appropriate statistical methods used? Were study limitations adequately highlighted? Was a critical analysis of the study results performed? And finally, were the study results compared with other literature which is available? Following that, it, uh, the individual studies should be assessed more in detail. Some questions are, were the study objectives and hypotheses defined before the study was conducted? Was, a, was there a formal study protocol? Were the patient's inclusion and exclusion criteria, criteria adequately selected? Does the presentation of methodology and results comply with the study protocol? Were patient characteristics in two or maybe more groups sufficiently similar to allow comparisons between the groups? Were confounders measured, presented, and discussed appropriately? And the final question, are the pre, uh, primary and secondary endpoints achieved according to the study protocol? On this slide, again, I would um, make um, um, a short um, topic excourse towards the interpretation of the p-values. On the left-hand side, you see the p-value, and then on the right-hand side, the interpretation, interpretation of these p-values uh, range, ranges from hi, uh, highly significant level to significant level, borderline significant level, and the level of highly suggestive um, values, uh, which mean that in some cases it is uh, statistically significant if the level of significant significance was set at p um, lower than 0 0.1. But in most cases, in most studies, the level of significant uh, significance is set at 0 0.05. Um, however, this, does, uh, this presentation of p-values 
does not include the so-called effect size, for example, the hazard ratio. Um, but this topic, um, yeah, we should not discuss in this presentation here. This needs a separate uh, presentation. As soon as the individual studies, guidelines, and registered trials are screened, you should try to detect unanswered research questions. For example, does a lack of evidence exist in a specific patient cohort? Or what are unanswered study endpoints? And in the next step, you are hopefully able to formulate your own appropriate study question and or hypothesis. And this will be covered in the next presentation. This is one of my last slides, some um, helpful literature here highlighted, for example, the clinician, the clinician report, reported outcome assessment of treatment benefits by the ISPOR. And this is my last slide. And I would like to thank you for joining today. Uh, for questions and remarks, you can contact me by email as stated here. Again, thank you very, very much, and I wish you a pleasant day. Goodbye.